Hello everyone, welcome back. Now we're going to start in plastic deformation. If you remember in chapter 4, we said that the defeats that we have within the material giving some property to the metals that we call them, they will allow the atoms to move or to break the point but regenerate it with the neighboring one. Why? Because they had an room, a room basically to move around now we're talking about crystalline metals basically so plastic deformation when the force are more than the energy that the material has it to withstand without breaking bond which is the yield point so if you pass that point if the if the applied load is more than the energy basically you it will start breaking the bond now breaking the bond what will happen when when we have a lot of defeats within the material within the metal or the alloy basically the bonds will break but will regenerate with the neighboring one if you remember we had a lot of defeats and we we draw the defeats in the way that we said that there will be something like this there is a line is discontinuous for example there is a line there and we had this one of them which is edge dislocation edge dislocation so if 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 break if you break the bond for example this one will regenerate with this one and this one will come to this one in this manner there will still be same i mean the material will not be in two part but the shape will change so when you remove the load the bond will not be regenerated back so they will stay the way it is the shape will be deformed and that process we called sleep and we said that they're sleeping over each other we explained that sleep it's a process basically when the, the the lines are moving in this manner one break will bond to the next one so we'll be having a lot of defeats and those defeats are giving this property to the material that they will behave plastically i mean they will deform plastically without failure failure hasn't happened yet so they will just their shape is going to change now i told you that in most of the cases in most of the cases shape change is undesirable we don't want the shape change so but why we study plastic deformation this in this case and then the elastic region we design everything in elastic region but why we have to study plastic deformation now plastic deformation will give us indications that failure is close by and we love those materials who gave us indication before failure so we will discuss in chapter 8 two different behaviors some materials they don't give indication suddenly failure happens we don't like them they call them catastrophic failures some of them they will give gradual failure basically they tell us how ah, i'm out about to fail so give us indication a time to whether it's a building it's a machine to stop to maintain to change or to repair it so that's why we have to understand the plastic region how the material will behave there at least to know some information on them and do some calculation to understand how much room do we have there if the plastic deformation happens how much room do we have there before failure so we'll discuss this in plastic region So, in the plastic region, we have some properties. The yield, it's basically, we say the starting of, we know already this one, the yield is the starting point for the plastic region. Now, we have one, another material property we call tensile or strength. Now, tensile or sometimes goes for compressive strengths. So, it can be this one can be compressive strings can be compressive strings remember we said that the stress strain curve that we have it the stress strain curve that we're drawing it can be for tension it can be for compression it can be for tension it can be for compression some material they cannot withstand tension so we will do compressive force stress strain diagram or tensile force stress strain diagram if they can stand tensile force 
now what does this tensile strength means or compressive strength mean it's the maximum stress that the material can handle a maximum stress that the material can handle if you apply more than that the material goes to failure so it would be the highest point on the curve the highest point on the curve will be considered as the strength it's not yield it's not yield yield we know where is it for example they say this is yield yield is the limit between the elastic and plastic that's something else but the name whether it goes by tensile strings or compressive strings so T TS or CS or you can just write the tensile strings compressive strings if the curve is for tension the highest point will be tensile strings if the curve is for compressive we call compressive stress strain diagram so the highest point we call compressive strings compressive strings strings compressive strings tensile strings the highest stra stress that the material can handle because after that it directly goes to failure this is the failure the last point of the stress strain diagram is the failure the last point so this is not failure here this is not failure some material they have this 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 phenomena after even it goes down i mean they no longer resist anything we'll discuss this one discuss this part in chapter eight we'll discuss this one in chapter eight we call them necking now necking basically the material it's elongating some way elongated reach to elastic plastic zone at some point will start to have a neck they call them necking well when the necking mainly start when reach to the close to the one after the maximum stress applied necking happens after necking there is no way back there is no way back it goes to failure so this chapter 8 is only talking about this part here chapter 8 talking about this part here what will happen how the materials fails so we'll discuss for brittle and ductile materials we'll understand what do you mean by brittle and ductile materials later on so we'll discuss this in chapter 8 now in in plastic zone also we divide it to two parts one one after the yield before necking before necking and then after necking after necking so the highest the highest stress there will be considered as the tensile stress if the stress strain diagram is for tension force if the strain stress diagram is for compression force compressive force we'll call compressive we'll compressive strength this is one material property that we're supposed to know we're supposed to know there now let me discuss some or let's bring back the information that we discussed them in the beginning discuss them in the beginning remember in the beginning we said that stress will have engineering and true and this basically will give us a true strain and it's going to give us a sorry the first one is going to give us the engineering strain the second one is going to give us the true strain true strain and if you remember we said in elastic zone in elastic zone we said that sigma is equal to sigma true and why because we said that a zero the area remains a zero the area is not going to change because in elastic zone the material deform but is always reversible reversible so the area is not going to deform permanently but as soon as you step into plastic zone the area is no longer a zero so in plastic zone in plastic zone we realize that sigma which is goes for the engineering 
is not equal to the true stress and if those are not equal sure their strain will not be equal as well because we know the strain comes from the stress come from the stress so the first one we call engineering second one true now let's discuss mainly today i'm discussing the information because you need to understand what's going on in the plastic zone how we're dealing with these things then you'll be able to easy to do the calculation now let's say that we'll come back to the graph that we have it the stress strain diagram stress strain diagram let's say i'm going to bring the idle one i'm going to bring the idle one that's basically easy to understand which we have a straight line then yield will happen and we have the plastic zone so this is the idle case i have now that's basically the so this is the yield we have it there the yield which is separating the separating the plastic zone and the elastic zone this is plastic zone this is elastic zone the elastic zone and this is plastic zone now this curve when it's when we draw this curve when we basically draw this curve what do we have what do we have we have force we have initial z area when we're drawing this curve when we're drawing this curve what do we have we have two information we have the load for example the load and we have area a0 so a0 is the original area the original area we have it we just simply have some forces we are applying all the force and we draw the graph we draw the graph we draw the graph so we realize that this curve this curve drawn by using what let's say this is force 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 over a zero force over a zero and you realize that force over a zero is what it's true or engineering you remember we said the force over area is general equation for stress yes if this is original area that's an engineering stress so the true stress will not appear will not appear in the graph here why because we have a in a stand area and we said that we cannot calculate in a stand area i mean i don't know what is the area at this point at each point after in after yield a it's constantly changing a changing i mean keep changing but i cannot calculate at each point at each point different area so the graph when we draw the graph it's based on a0 that's first thing i needed to understand to remember even if it's in a plastic zone the graph it's drawn the graph is drawn based on the a0 so the the corrected graph they call the corrected graph will be something like this the corrected graph will be something after the yield the corrected graph will be something like this so it's after the yield i mean it has to be something say after the yield here so the corrected graph will be something like this there is something as well going on there i'm not going to go into detail of that one i'll discuss this one in chapter eight after making is something else now why it's keep rising there this is the true so this is the true why it's keep rising because the area keep reducing at the bottom and if the area keep reducing the stress it's keep increasing that's what the true stress but why this is going to come down if you think if you think about it i mean the area it's constant there is not going to change but the material cannot handle anymore that's why it, it comes like this so this the blue one the blue one since it's based on a0 a0 that's why this is engineering this is engineering stress engineering stress we call it and the other one will be a true stress that's going to be a true stress so there is a relation between them we'll come back to them we'll discuss them 
if you have a true stress, you can get the engineering stress. If you have the engineering stress, you can get the true stress. Because a point, so that's why we said that in a, in a, in a plastic zone, for any point you take it, for example, if I take a point, I can have an engineering stress, which is the blue one. I can have a true stress, which is on the green one. Or if you, for example, if you go up like this, if you go up from here, you will have two things, whether you find engineering stress or you can find a true stress. If you come from the other way, if you come from the other way, also you will be having two strain. Why? Because the first thing you'll hit it is the injury, the true strain, the true strain. If you keep continuous, you're going to hit the second curve, which is going to be the engineering strain. So this will be the true strain. This will be the engineering strain. If I go like this, this will be the engineering strain stress and this one over here will be the true stress and the board is a bit you know, let me just make a curves with different color for example if different color to use it say if this is meeting this point it's gonna be here which is because it's on the blue one it's engineering the same one goes to top if it goes to the top so the same place goes to the top this time it's gonna give us true because on the true curve the same way if we come from the other direction if you come from the stress since it hit the green one the green one basically is gonna give us the true and if it hits the if it hits the the blue one that's gonna give us the engineering string so they will be that's what we say that they're not equal in the plastic zone we will be discussing them in detail the relation between them how do you find these things between them so when we draw the curve we draw engineering stress which is based on the a0 so if i give you a data if you give you a data give you a data a force and you have the initial area you'll be able to draw the curve for me if i just give you the force and you have the initial area you will draw this curve for me but you will not be able to draw the true, true stress curve, remember. You will not be able to draw the true stress curve. Why? Because we don't have any stand area. We cannot calculate all those areas every time it's changing. What is the area? I don't know it. And we don't have a machine to measure this area. Keep every time when you increase the load to measure the area. That's what we, they did they did in order to find the equations because you the performing of this performing this one it's easy if you use the a0 and then how they got the relation between those materials i mean how do we know where is this one yes how they got the information the re relation between them sure they did it this way S test apply the load they measure the diameter this is the area in stand apply the load for each material and this they got them some material properties some other constants relation between them in order to have a relation between the engineering stress and the true stress so those are those are the things to remind you that in elastic in plastic zone we will be having we'll be having this two difference between the stresses now let's talk about some material properties since we are in elastic in plastic zone there are some terms that we have to understand first term is ductility now ductility is representation of the materials how much this material will deform before failure the easiest way to remember this one is the chewing gum i mean remember uh, the, the the example i'm bringing it to you it's something metaphor just to understand the idea of the terms i mean chewing gum is it's rubber it's not something it's metal but it's easier to imagine what this ductile and brittle means now you have a chewing gums chewing gums when you take it out with two fingers you just simply pull it apart if it's a good basically it will stretch it will stretch it will stretch without rupture yes? that's basically we call it ductile 
Tactile means that the material, the material will have a lot of deformation. Will have a lot of deformation. As you can see that from point A to point C is what? They say this is the yield. I mean, they say yield, this is plastic deformation. When strain is increasing, what does it mean? A more deformation. The last point is the failure, which the two material will break apart. If you try, for example, pull the chewing gum more and more, at one point there will be two pieces, yes? That's basically the last point. They no longer stand anymore. That's how much they can deform, basically. That will be ductility. Now, the same chewing gum, put it in the freezer, leave it for half an hour, take it out, just try to pull it apart, it will just break directly, yes? It may, it may have a bit ductility, but not that much as before. It will simply break. It will pull apart and break. So what will happen? You have a less room for deformation. It deforms, but little, you just simply break. Now this is, we call this one brittle materials. Now brittle materials, they don't have too much plastic deformation. They have it, but little plastic deformation. They have. Why? Because a part of this deformation is what? It's elastic. For example, this for the blue one, for the blue one, just clear the board and just explain this one with blue color for the blue one. So we have for the blue one, let's say half of this one, say the first part is elastic, the second part is plastic. We have plastic deformation, but little, but little. However, for the red one, for the red one, let's say this is the elastic. The elastic you have it but look at the plastic region look at the plastic region it's a lot so you have a lot of room for deformation before failure and we love ductile material because ductile materials gave us indication i mean it will tell us that something is going to happen but it gives us time before the failure happens but unfortunately the brittle materials they have little room little room in order to give us indication that failure is close by. And this is little information that we have in it. Now, when we can tell a material is ductile, is brittle, it's totally relative. Relative, relative means what? I mean, if you compare, if you compare something with something, then it makes sense. Let's say that you're comparing, you're comparing something glass to ceramic. Now the cup that you have it for drinking coffee, the cups, ceramic cups. Now which one brittle, which one is ductile? I mean, both of the material we know that glass is can break easily. Also, ceramic can break easily, but for sure one of them, one of them will have different more plastic let's say one of them is like this it's failed the other one will be like this so if you compare them if you compare them let's say that they say that you will say the ceramic is more ductile than the glass more ductile than the glass so ductility it's relative it's compared to something how do we calculate this how do we calculate the Ductility is a percentage of elongation. Percentage elongation. The final length. Now, this final length is the length at the failure. This is not at the failure. This is length at the failure. At the failure. I wish that we had the lab at the failure. What will you do? You will, first, for example, you have the material in the beginning. It's like this. You apply the load. You apply the load. What will happen to this material? They will deform something like this. They will break. Sure, they will break because at one point when the, the test is over, it will break like this. Then what will happen? You'll bring them back together. You'll bring the two material back together. I mean, just, you cannot bring it back to original, but you will just simply put them back together like this in order to calculate the final length. Now, this is the final length. So you bring them back together, just touching each other in order to find what was the last final length that the material basically separated? The final length. 
and then the final length minus the original length that will tell us that how much is this material elongated how much is material change in the dam that the length before failure so divided by the original one times 100 will be percentage elongation percentage elongation there is another way to calculate they call percentage area reduction the area as well but this is most more convenient for people to find in the lab when i was in high in university we did this one we test the steel we put in the machine test is over we got two things one the graph to calculate all the information the tensile strings the yield strings the secant modulus the tangent modulus all the information from there the final the final point on the graph which gives us the strain and we use the strain to find the final length we calculated directly there to calculate why because we put things together we measure with tape we found the final length and even we check the area here how much was the area but it was a bit hard for us to check because it was irregular shape the area was something like this so you cannot calculate it's not something like round to, to use some special tools to calculate the diameter it's something like this even the teacher was trying to tell us that you can measure from different angles to have a close information to see something to see the average diameter of it it's not not easy but for the length it was easy to calculate the length and to calculate the elongation how much elongation since we know the original length so this is we call it ductility it will be two things whether person elongation or reduction in area but the person elongation is more so the reduction in area is possible as well reduction percent ductility as percent reduction that's also possible because the area we know that under the tension the area will be reduced to something smaller 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 so what is the final one before final one before that's going to be again the area when the material is separated will be two part that area will be if you can find it it can be used to find also represent ductility so if someone says that percentage ductility for example you call like this is percentage elongation is equal to 60 percent and if you have another material elongation it's 10 percent now you know that the 60 percent is more ductile than the 10 percent or you can say that the 10 percent is brittle referred to the 60 percent one because 60 percent is more ductile more ductile so this is basically another material property we call it ductility is another material property another material property we have it there we call it ductility which is the, the definition here the definition here it's basically measure of degree of plastic deformation before fracture or sustained fracture basically because you will go till the fracture and that deformation will give us ductility so it's a con degree of plastic deformation we said that how much is going to deform before fracture that's basically indication of ductility so we said that no plastic deformation or very little we call brittle brittle the term that we have we're using it it's not a measure remember brittleness is not a measure it's a term that we tell the material if they have lack of ductility if they don't have ductility we call them brittle materials but we cannot calculate brittle we cannot calculate brittle we can calculate ductility but we cannot calculate brittle it just simply if it's no plastic deformation or a very little plastic deformation we call them brittle material this is another term that we're supposed to know well another term that we have to know resilience now resilience they called modulus of resilience modulus of resilience as well it goes by this name modulus of resilience it's another material property another material property this is kind of energy related to energy it's the energy that the material can absorb without plastic deformation now I'm going to explain this one for you with the, an easy terms and easy examples. Now, I'm not sure if you have ever watched the golf ball in a slow motion 
or any for example ball when it's hitting the wall in a slow motion now those are by the way those are not metal they're not metal they mainly come from the polymer but the explanation for me it's here to understand to understand because they're easier they you can see them when something it's you can feel them it'll be easier to understand what those models of resilience means now basically if the ball hits or you hit the ball the shape of the ball basically will be something like this and it was round but after hitting will convert to something like this and gradually will go back to the circle look from here the shape hasn't changed no why because at the end you still have you still have the golf ball round yes or the ping pong whatever the tennis ball we have is still be round but i'm sure you've seen that video if you haven't seen it just go to youtube somewhere and search for the slow motion golf ball or slow motion tennis ball you will see that when the force is hitting the ball the shape is going to change now that impact force when it's hitting the material the impact force will be converted to energy and that energy will be absorbed by the material so if if the energy that absorbed is less than the modulus of resilience less than the resilience then the material can just simply use because the material has a resilience modulus which is a, a material property can use that one to dissipate the energy take the energy out and reform itself to the original one now oh, it makes sense something for you you see that i you you will say that i understand this phenomena it's elastic zone yes it's elastic zone yes it is basically for the elastic zone it is the energy that basically the material can absorb it without going to plastic deformation that's a resilience we call it modulus of resilience it's an energy that the material can absorb it will deform it will deform but it will just use that that property to bring it back to the original shape so how do we find this modulus of resilience it's area under or area of the elastic zone if this is the elastic zone the area under the elastic zone basically is the modulus of resilience so the area under the elastic zone so this area it's going to give us modulus of resilience this is going to give us modulus of resilience so this is strain yield the sigma yield it's basic area of triangle which is one over two sigma yield times strain yield that will be considered as modulus of resilience which goes for by u modulus of resilience half of the sigma y times strain y will be modulus of resilience modulus of resilience so the definition basically here says that the capacity of material to absorb energy when it's deformed elastically and then upon unloading to have this energy recovered so this is the energy i talk about you well for for metals you will not feel that one because metal they have the energy is less but if they have it but for the polymer for the other material which with the balls you will feel that it has this one so they called ur the r goes for the resilience which is something called u the energy that we have it there how they someday will go for uh, well, they go by using since you know s strain yield you can find it you can just relate it to modulus of elasticity even why right? because strain it's related to stress somehow so you can just simply write in this manner that's also possible that's also possible there now for toughness i'll not explain it here toughness i will explain this one in uh, chapter eight i will be I can explain this one here. I'll explain this one in chapter 8, I believe will be better. 
I don't know if it's come to the law we'll see that if if toughness I can explain it it's basically area under the whole curve it's the, uh, the energy that let me just explain this when it's simple then I'll come back to it. toughness it's kind of the energy that required for the material to absorb it before fracture I mean the whole energy the first energy is to after we, from the yield sorry to go to plastic but after plastic we say that after elastic there is no failure yet still material is withstanding withstanding but it's still absorbing energy absorbing energy the form change the slips happens bones will break shift deformation will happen but up to a point up to a point so how tough is the material that's basically depends on the area under the whole curve the area it's related to crack and crack when crack is there but that's why i'm going to come back to this one in chapter 8 detail because when we talk about crack those things then you'll understand toughness is much easier just remember toughness is the whole energy that the material can handle before failure for now that's enough but in chapter 8 since we're having some crack then we'll discuss in toughness in more detail I believe those material properties will be enough for this video in the next video I'm gonna explain some equations and then we'll solve example in the class so that the example will solve in the class so that you will have a lot of time to ask question regarding to solve it so in the next video we'll discuss some relation between the true stress and strain and engineering stress engineering strain in order to have a better understanding how to do this calculation thanks for